So $360 million is a lot of money. Where do you plan to deploy it? Yuri. We, from day one, we've been looking to invest in the best, gener best companies in commerce. And the $360 million fund is continuing to do that with the same thesis. So really thinking about commerce end to end. It's not only the products and services people buy, but where they're buying them, whether that's marketplaces or peer to peer sort of experiences. And then also the tools and technologies that power all of those um, business models on the back end. Brian, you recently joined Forerunner from Excel. How did the fundraising environment differ from this vantage point? Sure, so at Excel, we've been around for 35 years, and so we had a long history with several of our LPs, and so fundraising was more about going back to the well and continuing those relationships. Whereas at Forerunner, we're doubling the fund size, and so we wanted to go out and bring new folks to the table. And so we had this great opportunity to hand pick who we wanted to work with and who we thought would be strategic to the firm. So there's a lot of money out there. Multi $1 billion funds have already been raised this year. You know. Is there too much money out there? I mean, are you still seeing the opportunities in e-commerce, which is your focus that you saw when um, you and Kirsten were there in the early days? Yeah, absolutely. I think innovation's constantly happening, and commerce really is a broader set of opportunities than just e-commerce. Really, what, ki what kind of transactions don't have some digital component into it today? And so I think when we look at the landscape, we're even more excited about the innovation that's happening, how much the existing landscape is really um, transforming itself end to end. And you know the consumer today is more empowered and um, has more knowledge than ever before. So their expectations are growing. With that, there are new needs that they're um, that that need to be met. Amazon is threatening all e-commerce companies. So you know where do you see opportunities to invest in companies that aren't going to be eaten by Amazon? Sure. So uh, if you think about it, Amazon is now getting one out of every two dollars online, which is which is a crazy high amount. Mm -hmm. um, but they play to certain strengths, right? So Amazon is all about convenience. It's all about timeliness. Uh, but they haven't been as strong around you know, branded products. Uh, they haven't been as strong around services. And when we think about the companies that we're ultimately touching, several of them ultimately play in different markets. They might play in the pharma market. They might play in CPG. Uh, they might play in financial services. And so we think about Amazon a lot, uh, but we also think about empowering companies that are competing with Amazon and companies that are playing in totally different markets. SoftBank is deploying a huge amount of money into the tech ecosystem. The big story of the last few days has been connections to Saudi Arabia, a lot of their money coming from Saudi Arabia, you know, and by default, a lot of tech money in the tech ecosystem coming from Saudi Arabia. Do you think that's a problem? Yeah, I'll take that one. So uh, this is something that we're all just digesting real time. Uh, Saudi Arabia has been putting money in the tech ecosystem for several years now, and they've been a strong supporter of the ecosystem. Uh, when we think about it, historically, founders haven't asked the question of where money's ultimately coming from. The end consumers of our companies haven't really asked that question. So this is something that we're all digesting real time as an industry, and it's something that we'll have to think about much harder going forward. Like We take a lot of pride in our LPs and where our money comes from, but historically, it hasn't been something that's been top of mind for founders, and we'll see if this experience changes that. So do you have money from uh, the Saudi government? Do some, are some of your portfolio companies making these decisions as well, or considerations as well? Sure, so we do not. Uh, and our companies, when it comes to SoftBank, the first question has been, is a fund like SoftBank the right fit? Is a large investment of hundreds of millions do of, of dollars the right fit? And so we've been asking those questions for the last years now because SoftBank has shown up with a very different value proposition than has been available to our companies historically. And so we've been asking those questions and maybe it's been the right fit for some companies, maybe it hasn't. And this just adds another layer to the conversation that we need to be thoughtful about as we look at potentially partnering with them. Now, um, Yuri, you joined Kirsten back in the day when, when Forerunner was really early stage and it was for a long time, all women. Yes. And then you made a decision to hire Brian. Um, so. Talk to me about, about that decision. Was that a conscious decision? You know, it, um, it was a conscious decision, but I think it's worth going back and saying we never started the firm with the intention of having it be an all-female firm. Kirsten and I met. We had a shared passion. I was super enthusiastic about what she was building, and here we are. It was a team of women. It was three women. It was four women. And then we stopped and we thought, well, wait a minute. We're looking at the consumer. The consumer is diverse. We have some diversity around the table, which is pretty unique in our market, but we weren't necessarily feeling like we had all the voices represented, so we did. We we actually thoughtfully decided we did want to hire a male participant to our team. Um, we hired our associate, KJ, that was a couple years ago. And then just last month, obviously, Brian joined our team. We have a new principal, Jason, as well. Um, and so you know, it's, it's funny because I think when you start 
your team with diversity in mind, it's going to evolve to that point naturally. And so we didn't hire anybody thinking about being a man or a woman, but just whether they were the great you know, fit for the job. So totally unironically, and we only have 30 seconds left, but what do you bring to the table? <laughs> well, be, besides being a white guy, I hope they bring a few other things to the table. Um, no, look, I've, I've been in this industry a long time. I've got several perspectives, but I think most importantly, I bring a special relationship with a foreigner team. We've worked yeah. together for over 10 years. We see the world in very similar ways, and we're really excited about what we can build with this new, this, this new fund.